All right, so I want to talk about a very serious issue that I see with a lot of the real estate agents that I'm talking to right now, and that is something called the comparison trap. And so this is a very, very serious issue because I think it's messing with a lot of, of agents' mindset right now. And so I want to talk about in this video, I want to break down how the comparison trap shows up so that you can uh, be aware if, if this is maybe something that you're struggling with. And then most importantly, what do you do about it? All right. So let's jump into this thing. So the first area that this shows up that I see all the time is when agents start to compare their chapter one to another agent's chapter 10. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what happens all the time is an agent will hear about uh, another agent's success doing X, Y, and Z strategy. And of course, that agent then gets excited and says, well, that's what I'm going to do to start building success for my business. That's what I'm going to do to start acquiring new business and new clients and start to build my own business. As they start, like anything that we start, it's challenging in the beginning. And they start to say, well, I don't get it. I am doing the same thing Nancy is doing, but she's getting four or five listings per month and I'm getting no listings per month. Well, how is that possible? And then they start to get really down on themselves and say, is it me? Is it? No, here's what's happening. Let's just look at uh, an example of this, okay? Let's look at the example of an agent that has been uh, uh, ha has an outbound prospecting model who's been doing it for call it 10 years. Okay. Well, what the new agent doesn't understand or what the agent that is trying the new strategy doesn't understand is that Nancy has a pipeline that has matured over 10 years. In other words, when, when the, when the new agent hears that Nancy is making 30 contacts per day, and then he makes 30 contacts a day, there's so much context and nuance that's being missed. And this is what I often tell agents. They say, well, Brandon, how come when you make 30 contacts a day, you're setting four or five listing appointments and I set 30 and I make 30 contacts a day and it takes me weeks to set an appointment? Well, there's nuance. You're comparing your chapter one to my chapter 10. What does that mean specifically? Here's an example. When Nancy in this story or me, if I make 30 contacts a day, it's mainly to people that either I have worked with in the past or have been referred to me, mainly. Where if you're just starting out in this business and you start prospecting, the 30 people that you talk to are probably all cold calls. All 30 of those people have no idea who you are. You have no idea who, who they are. You've never worked bef uh, together before. And it's a complete stranger. It's a complete cold call. And therefore, the conversion would be extremely different in those conversations. The other thing that's happening is that... Uh, through that effort, certainly if you if you uh, start to extrapolate the conversion throughout the sales funnel, just in this one example, the other thing that you would find is that the conversion ratio is a lot high. So the agent who's just getting started with outbound prospecting, when they start to set listing appointments, they start going on these appointments, they find that they're probably converting one out of four versus uh, an agent like Nancy or myself, if we go on four appointments, the likelihood that was that we get all four, probably have a hundred percent conversion. And the, the the new agent says, "Well, man, I just don't understand. Like, I'm using the same script you are. I'm using the same uh, material you are. I'm using the same resume you are. I'm using. It's all the same, right? But the four appointments that Nancy and I are going on again are from people that have been in the database for years and years and years and years and years." And years. And that meeting or that presentation is very different than you going to present to an expired listing who has 12 uh, interviews signed up and you're one of 12 competing for this one listing. It's very, very different. And so that's one example. Let me give you another example. So I see this a lot with agents who maybe they uh, invest in some type of pay-per-click campaign. Maybe they do a Google pay-per-click campaign and they say, well, we have the same ad budget, we're in the same market, but Brandon, you're getting three listings a month from your Google PPC campaign, I'm getting zero, how can this be? Well, again, it's an agent comparing their chapter one, they're just getting started in this, versus somebody who's been doing this for years and years and years and years. 
With a Google pay per click campaign, it would take you a good six months to build up a pipeline before it starts to mature and spit out listings. So certainly in your first month doing anything, you're not going to see the result. So the first thing to, to look at is everybody, every other agent that you're trying to compare yourself to, you have to first ask yourself, okay, well, how long have they been doing this? And how long have I been doing this? And certainly our results are going to be very, very different because of all the nuance and all the context that goes into what they're doing. I'll give you one more example. Uh, maybe an agent, Bob, has been farming a neighborhood for 17 years and he gets 37% market share in that neighborhood. So the new ambitious agent says, well, I'm going to start farming. And they start doing a, uh, I would call a level one farming campaign where they send out two postcards per month. They do it for 90 days and say, damn, this is expensive. I got nothing so far. This thing doesn't work. Well, it isn't that the tactic didn't work. It's just that you think that because you're comparing to somebody who's been doing it for a lot longer than you, probably uh, is a lot better at it than you. And this is where the comparison trap starts. Okay, so that's number one. So let's talk about the other way that this shows up. Chasing other people's ambition versus your own. So this is a very, very, uh, this is another very dangerous way that the comparison trap is just killing a lot of agents' mindset right now. So what do I mean by this? So this is the agent who um, says to themselves in their mind that more is better, that more is better. Let me give you an example. One of the, the, the conversations I often have to have with, with agents that I coach is they have this ambition of selling 100 homes per year. It's just this number that they want to go after because they think it's what they want. And then when we do what it takes to get there, what they often find is it makes them extremely unhappy. That they thought in the beginning that more equals better. More money is better. More things is better. Bigger house is better. More watches is better. Faster car is better. And then oftentimes when they uh, get there, they, it's, it, it, it oftentimes they find emptiness. They actually find the opposite of what they thought it was going to be. It actually brought them more misery than it did happiness. It brought them more depression than it did joy. And why is this? Well, because the comparison trap says that uh, you most people are chasing what they want to want versus what they actually want. In other words, in our society of trying to accumulate a world of material objects to show off or get people to like you because we're comparing, we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, we believe that those things in return will then bring us the happiness that we say we don't have. And then the the chase, and when we get there, we say, well, man, this isn't all that that's cracked up to be. In fact, I don't like my life right now. In fact, you know, at some point, more money loses its utility. And at the cost of what? And so I was just having a conversation literally yesterday with an agent, and she's earning $500,000 a year. Some of you say, well, I want $500,000 a year. Be careful. It's exactly what we're talking about in this video. Because here's the nuance to that $500,000 in income. That means her not seeing her kids, her not seeing her family, her working seven days a week, her uh, uh, gaining weight, her uh, losing her health. She says, wow, I was a lot happier at $350,000 a year. I was really, really happy. I had more control over my time. I used to work out. I had more time with my family. I got to travel more. And so, again, just another example of how we get caught in this comparison trap. So what are we going to do about it, right? So number one, we must get clear on what you actually want. Now, you might be saying, yeah, Brandon, no shit. That's easy. It is not easy. It actually is very, very, very difficult. In fact, most of the agents that I talk to from a, from a, a perspective of coaching they can't answer this question. And I'm going to challenge you watching this video. Can you clearly articulate exactly what you want? How would you design your lifestyle right now? If I put you on stage right now, 
in front of 7,000 people, could you clearly articulate and design your lifestyle in front of everybody? I'm talking crystal clear, no vagueness. I'm not talking about, yeah, I want to be successful. That is not clear. Can you articulate your lifestyle, the type of income you want to generate and why? What, what are we gonna do with the income? What, uh, where do you live and why? Uh, what type of uh, schooling system do your children go to and why? Do you have clarity around what you actually want? Not what you think you want based on society's pressure on all of us. Not that. I'm talking about what you actually want for you, not what you think you want for, to impress other people. That is step number one. And my first recommendation before you start to make any type of steps forward in this business is you get clear on that. Because otherwise, that's where burnout comes from. And the, and the idea of like spinning your wheels, it's because those people aren't clear on where they're going. So everything they do all day, coming from a place of being react, uh, reacting to everything, they say, well, I'm burned out. Well, burnout comes from the lack of clarity on vision. That's where burnout comes from because you don't know why you're doing what it is that you're doing. So number one, we've got to get clear on what we want. Then number two is we need to create a world not where we compete with others, but where you compete with yourself. Well, what does that actually mean? So one of the things from a practical perspective uh, is monthly business audits. So this is one of the things that I would do with an agent that I would coach is every 30 days is to audit the plan versus the actual. So once we get clear on what we want, we get clear on who we're looking, who we're uh, trying to become, because that's the process that we're all in. We're in the process of all becoming our future self. And what we do today uh, will manifest our future self in the future, right? That's pretty obvious. So we're going to look at every 30 days, okay, what was the plan that we built when I was clear of my vision? And then what did I actually do? And then we're going to look for the holes in that audit. Where am I, um, where am I, where do I have cognitive dissonance going on? In other words, in where am I plan in the last 30 days, am I saying I want this thing and doing uh, something completely different? Where are those holes? If the goal was to do X, Y, and Z, and we're beca behaving a certain way, we need to actually look at the plan long after the excitement has left us to the from the time where we built the plan. Yeah, it's easy to make the plan when you're all excited and filled with dopamine. Uh, that's easy. But after the excitement has left you, now we have to have a plan to review that every 30 days to make sure that we're on track. This is how people fall off the rails. That's why most people never accomplish their goals by the end of the year, because they're all excited to set the new plan. And then they compare themselves with everybody else except for who? Themselves. And that's where the competition lies. It's here's the plan. Here are the actions and the behaviors that I have to, uh, to, to execute on to accomplish the plan. That is the competition, my friend, because of everything else we just talked about in this video. When you start to compare your results with other people, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a process that, has, uh, that doesn't work. Because it's too out of context. You don't know their why. You don't know what they're fighting for. You don't know their why, just like they don't know yours. So to compare yourself with other people is a uh, it's setting yourself up for misery. And so what we want to do, again, is get very clear on and, and very intentional on what it is that we want, number one. And number two, let's create the plan. And then every 30 days, let's review that plan to make sure that you're on track.